an electric atmosphere for week six of high school football on the Jersey Shore. I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for logging on to ShoreSportsZone.com. We have got a great highlight show for you, highlighted by a number of big-time matchups. We're going to get started here in Little Silver. Everyone's been talking about this one. Undefeated 5-0 Red Bank Catholic taking on the 5-0 Red Bank Regional Bucks. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Red Bank Regional is sponsored by Navisync Electrical. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Red Bank Catholic is sponsored by Surf Taco. The Buck Deck, they just take it to another level. We can't tell you how much we appreciate the Shore Sports Zone signs out in the crowd. That's pretty special. And by the way, our sponsors are awesome. Mammoth Building Center, who gives out those game balls every week. They said, big game. We want to throw some T-shirts out to the crowd. So thanks, Mammoth Building Center, for getting those T-shirts. This was a special atmosphere. A packed house in Little Silver. The entire stadium was filled, and these two teams did not disappoint. On the opening drive, Red Bank Regional is marching down the field. Aline Gotzi, great run down to the 37-yard line. RBR had all the early momentum, but hold on. Jack Nowitzki's pass is incomplete. That's behind the line. That's a live ball. Great awareness by Mike Balzofiori. 70 yards and Red Bank Catholic strikes first. It's 7-0. But give credit to RBR. They march right back down the field. Aline Gotz, he's got an escort there by Colin Young, number 50. Great job by the O-line of RBR. Gotz, he's in the zone for 15 yards out. We're tied up at 7 apiece. Red Bank Regional really dominated the first half, but the equalizer was turnovers created by RBC. Colin Shaughnessy's punt is muffed by Matt Reardon. Zach Bear recovers, and on a short field, an 18-yard drive, Dylan Murphy, the two-yard touchdown run, it's 14-7 RBC. Late in the first half, Jack Nowitzki to Sadiq Palmer, the future Syracuse Orange to the 24-yard line. And the drive continues as Oblin Gatsi gets it inside the five yard line. Great run there by Gatsi. It sets the stage for Sadiq Palmer. A two yard touchdown run with just 40 seconds to go in the second. At the half, we've got a 14 14 ball game. In the opening drive of the third quarter, Eddie Hahn sets the tone. The RBC quarterback had two big runs, and RBC looking sharp. Murphy with his second touchdown run of the game. This one's from three yards out. 21-14 RBC after three. Fourth quarter, a big fourth down conversion as Nowitzki finds Sadiq Palmer. It would lead to Jack O'Connor from 36 yards out. Hey, Jack O'Connor is seven of seven for field goals this year. This field goal's huge, it's 21-17. So now Red Bank Regional turns to its defense and the Bucks unit comes up big. Eddie Hahn slips, Sean Naiman and Reichen Johnson with the stop. That means Red Bank Regional's getting the ball back. And here comes the biggest play of the game. Jack Nowitzki, changing directions, gets to the sideline, and this is one special run. Wow, 58 yards for Jack Nowitzki, six minutes to go. The Bucks are in front 24-21. Now, Red Bank Catholic is able to bring it all the way down the field. It's fourth and two. Eddie Hahn is right near the first down marker. It's gonna go to the chains. And what we're gonna do is freeze it to show you how close this was. It was literally one link of the chain, but Red Bank Catholic comes up just so close, but short. So with just over two minutes to go, Red Bank Regional needs a first down to ice the game. It's third down, and Sadiq Palmer comes through again. This run wraps things up for an upset victory, and then mayhem ensues on the field in Little Silver. A post-game celebration as the student section, the buck deck, storms the field to celebrate, and Red Bank Regional enjoying a monumental victory pretty special stuff 24 to 21 is your final don't forget about red bank catholic by the way this team has the ability to respond oh so well after those oh so rare defeats red bank regional is now 6-0 on the season i think people knew that red bank regional was going to be a strong team in 2015 but no one saw this coming
After the game, Red Bank Regional Head Football Coach Nick Giglio summing up the emotions of a special night as he fired up his troops one more time. In the, in the pregame, I talked to you about the power of the buck. The power of the buck. Are you kidding me? That, that, that power, those fans, those alumni gave you that strength. Yeah. Gave you that strength. Something RVR is not used to, and you know, to have this here, it's unreal. It is just absolutely unreal. I mean, the, the buck deck was filled to capacity, I think, for the first time in history, maybe. I mean, the school spirit is unreal. It's just something I can't, I can't even say enough about. And, uh, I mean, uh, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. This is the most exciting thing in our lives right now. We wanted this so bad. We worked so hard for this. And I just want to thank my team and my coaches for this win. It just feels so amazing, just the crowd, man. It felt like I was playing in the Super Bowl, and that just made everybody on our team go 101%. That was probably one of the most amazing games I've ever seen in my life. Like, looking at the stands out there gave me the chills. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take it. Everyone out here was excited as hell. Biggest game of my life, easily. We knew that coming in, and we knew we weren't going to lose this game. We, we stayed off Twitter, stayed off the trash talk, let them talk, and we, we just came out to play. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Manalapan High School is sponsored by DB Orthopedic and Physical Therapy. Thanks to Tom's Ford for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Middletown South. It's an exciting time at Middletown South. That's because the Eagles are ranked number one in the entire state of New Jersey by NJ.com. The Eagles hosting Manalapan, a team that's had their number in recent years. But the Eagles defense set the tone right away. Check out Kevin Higgins. Big time stop right there on Marcus Salinas. And then great pressure by the defensive line. Jake Krellen and Dylan Rogers in for the quarterback sack. And the rest of the story was Middletown South's offense cranking up. Matt Mascara going up top. Tom Coffey, 28 yard catch. Good job by Coffey there. Seven nothing Eagles in front. And Middletown South was simply dominant on offense. Here's Mascara scrambling and coming right at you. Mascara with a 16 yard touchdown run makes it 13 nothing. And everything's going Middletown South's way. That's because number 27 is back. Cole Rogers back from injury, feeling just fine. A 35 yard touchdown run makes it 20 to nothing Middletown South. And it's time for us to shine the zone spotlight on Cole Rogers, a 2014 Shore Sports Zone all zone pick I have a pretty good feeling he'll be back at our banquet this December. Big fan of Amy Schumer, who had a great stint on Saturday Night Live. Same favorite food as me, chicken parm and pickle juice. The pregame superstition there, I've seen it for many, many years. Pickle juice prevents cramping. More zone spotlights all year long on ShoreSportsZone.com. The Middletown South Nation with the pink out. Great job for breast cancer awareness and Cole Rogers, once again, another fantastic run. This is part of his 189-yard effort into Braves territory. And it sets the stage for James McCarthy. Look at James McCarthy go, breaking tackles. A 28-yard run for James McCarthy into the zone. That made it 27-0 Middletown South. And the Eagles roll to a 42-7 win over Manalapan. So Middletown South is able to break a five-game losing streak to Manalapan, who had that dominant run in A North. But right now, the dominant team, not only in A North, but the entire state, is Middletown South. Look at the numbers for Cole Rogers. 21 carries, 189 yards, and three TDs as the Eagles roll at home in the swamp over Manalapan. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Brick Memorial is sponsored by Manasquan Bank and NutriShop. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Jackson Memorial is sponsored by Surf Taco. The Jaguar Nation out in full force. Jackson Memorial looking to bounce back after two straight losses. They had a tough test with red hot Brick Memorial. 7-0 Mustangs, the Jaguars driving. Dan Barker rolls out. Kyle Johnson's got it. Eight yard scoring play. We're tied up at seven at the half. Third quarter, Zach Lubertazzi gets into the backfield, brings down Tim Santiago. We're still tied up at seven. And then it's time for Jackson Memorial to make a move on offense. Barker to Kyle Lona. 
move the chains. The Jaguars are to the 15 yard line, but the Brick Memorial defense comes up with a huge turnover. A fumble by Mike Golick. The Mustangs recover. And then the big play of the game. Eli Laverin taking the pitch from Santiago. He weaves through traffic. This is a 50 yard touchdown. Eli Laverin comes through big. It's 14 7 Brick Memorial. And then more clutch defense from the Mustangs. Anthony Nobile, the sack on Barker. This is a loss of 13. Brick Memorial gets it back, and the Mustangs go back to Eli Laverin. Look at the cutback move right there. Awesome run, 20 yards. It would lead to this. Tim Santiago. He does it every single week. Santiago, a 40-yard touchdown. It's 21-7 Brick Memorial. And then don't forget about the other great running back in the Mustang stable. Tony Thorpe putting the game away with a 10-yard scoring play. 28 to seven is your final. Brick Memorial on a five game winning streak while Jackson Memorial shows how tough a South play is. The state champs are now three and three on the season. Get ready for next week. Brick Memorial hosting Middletown South. This will be a great football game. We look forward to bringing you those highlights. After the game, our Alex Lorenzo caught up with Eli Laverin who had that big touchdown run to give Brick Memorial the lead for good. We just got to kept working, and we know it was going to be a dogfight the whole game. So we just kept our cool, and our coach told us, don't go down. We just kept going. And, uh, they beat you guys last year, and they're state champs. What's it feel like to come out? Yeah, and get this we kept that in our mindset, in the back of our heads, that they came to our place, ruined our, ruined our home uh, game. So we have to come back and do our, do our thing. Thanks to Paver Restoration for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of St. John Vianney. Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Raritan High School is sponsored by Hazlitt Pharmacy. Our next stop is in Holmdale, where St. John Vianney looked to remain unbeaten, playing host to the Raritan Rockets. A 2-0 lead early for St. John Vianney on 4th and 7 on the drive after the safety. Anthony Brown to Michael Stapert, the 6'6 target's got it. 9-0 St. John Vianney. It looked like Raritan got right back into the ball game because Derek Ernst rips off a 56 yard touchdown run, but these points are taken off the board. The officials had a long deliberation. In the end, it was ruled offsides on the receiver before the play, so that was a real backbreaker for Raritan. And Anthony Brown, he was doing some backbreaking of his own with great runs like this. A 41 yard gallop for Anthony Brown, the great dual threat quarterback, will now go back to the air, Brown, to Marquis Ellington. This is a 13 yard scoring play. It's 16 nothing St. John Vianney. After the Lancers miss a field goal, Raritan gets something going and it starts with Derek Ernst. A great run here that covers 23 yards and it would lead to this. Mark Carnival to Nick Pasquin. Pasquin continues to be a playmaker week in and week out. This is a 61 yard gainer. And the Rockets get on the board. Derek Ernst from two yards out. We got a 16-6 game in the second quarter. But the St. John Vianney offense is relentless. Anthony Brown with a 53-yard run. He can do it all. It would lead to Chris Chukwanuke. A nine-yard scoring play at the half. St. John Vianney with a 22-6 lead. Second half now. Brown back to the air. Jeff Sheard. A 50-yard touchdown. Boy, Anthony Brown said it on Twitter this week. He has got one deep receiving course. So many guys can make plays. It's now 29-6. And then, how about Brown going back to Michael Stapert? This is a 54-yard touchdown. Wow. Anthony Brown is putting up some big, big numbers. It's 35-6. Raritan wouldn't go away, though. Here's Derek Ernst with a 27 yard run. And then Mark Carnival back to the air, Jordan Smith. This is a great play. 67 yard touchdown. It's 36-13. And Raritan is not giving up in this one. The Rockets defense makes a play. Ryan Dickens with a sack, it's a fumble. The Rockets are back in business. They turn to Nick Pasquin on the end around. It's now 36-19 in the third. On the following drive, third and 33 for St. John Vianney. Brown 
Shows great poise. Michael Stapert with a 45-yard touchdown. Man, it's 42-19 St. John Vianney. I'll tell you, Raritan really turned things up in the second half. Mark Carnival to Nick Pasquin, a 37-yard touchdown. Second TD of the game for Pasquin. That made it 43-26 at the end of three. But St. John Vianney had even more offensive firepower. Chris Chukwanuke, a 26-yard touchdown run. And then the knockout punch. Chukwanuke one more time. A 21-yard scoring play. And St. John Vianney rolls. 56-26 to 26 is your final. As you saw in the highlights, Raritan coming off their first loss of the season to Red Bank Regional at home last week. They got punched in the mouth, but were able to put some points up against one of the best teams in New Jersey. But St. John Vianney right now is rolling. They are 6-0 on the season, and it is starting to come together. St. John Vianney, a 30-point win at home over the Rockets. Thanks to Manasquan Bank for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Manasquan High School. Thanks to Reach Your Potential Training for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Rumson Fairhaven High School. Let's go to Rumson where RFH is certainly back on track after that loss to St. John Vianney a couple of weeks ago. Ask the Manasquan Warriors. And this is Brian Hess. He rolls around that left side and there he goes. A 75 yard touchdown run for Brian Hess. The Bulldogs have a 12 nothing lead. The RFH defense was outstanding, creating a number of turnovers here. The ball pops loose, and the Bulldogs are able to fall on it, giving Mike O'Connor some great field position. And O'Connor rolls out and finds Matt Vecchiarelli. This is an 11-yard scoring play. It's 18-0 in the first quarter. And Vecchiarelli was outstanding at the running back spot for RFH here. A great run inside the 20. And then check out this play. O'Connor to John Kingdon. What? That's a great one-handed catch. Hang on, we gotta take another look at this. This is some serious athleticism. John Kingdon, he's got glue in his hands or something. That is an unbelievable catch. But this drive would stall because the Manasquan defense comes through. O'Connor is picked off by Paul Kruger, but no worries because RFH continued to make stops on defense and let the offense take care of the rest. Matt Vecchiarelli is at it again. They like to run that sweep at RFH. This is a great run to the 22 yard line. And just to show you how classy these RFH kids are, the ref gets bowled over. There's Vecchiarelli and some other Bulldogs to help the ref right back up. They had a good laugh about that one. And we're learning that this Rumson Fairhaven rushing attack is a two headed monster. Vecchiarelli and Brian Hess. Hess with his second touchdown run of the game. It covers 11 yards. That made it 25-0 RFH. And Michael O'Connor, he is the complete package. Check out this throw here. Elijah McAllister, the sophomore. Great job by McAllister to get into the zone. That made it 32-0. And Rumson Fairhaven goes on to a 49-6 win over Manasquan. You saw some good defensive play in the highlights by Rumson Fairhaven. They also had two pick sixes, one by Mike Ruain early in the first quarter, and then a second half pick six, courtesy of Mike Murdoch. Rumson Fairhaven improves to four and one on the season, and the Bulldogs will have a great test next week. I can't wait to show you highlights of RFH and Lakewood. That one is gonna be a dandy. Thanks to Tom's Ford for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Keyport High School. We wrap things up in Asbury Park. Two of the most improved teams on the shore, the Blue Bishops hosting Keyport. The Red Raiders have seen Desmond Underwood make plays all year long. The spin move out of the tackle. He breaks free a 38 yard gain for Desmond Underwood. And Underwood can do a little bit of everything here. He goes to the air, the halfback pass to Cody Young. 18 yards, Keyport has a seven nothing lead. Asbury Park looking to answer back. Quarterback Devon Thompson rolls out. Going to keep it himself. Good decision, a 16-yard gain. And then Thompson goes to the air. Jadon Stevens, a 10-yard scoring play. We're tied up at seven in the second quarter. Then that Blue Bishops defense comes up with a big play. Keith White stopping Keyport for a loss. Under a minute to go in the half now. Thompson scrambling. He gets the first down, 
and wisely gets out of bounds. So the drive continues and it's Devon Thompson to Dante Abrams. Look at him absorb the contact. How did he hold on to that football? Wow, 19 yard touchdown. Asbury Park takes a 14-7 lead at the half and the Blue Bishops hang on for a 28-21 win over Keyport. Jadon Stevens with the game winner in the final minute. This Asbury Park team has had a number of close victories and Tim Foscu has done a tremendous job with these kids. Asbury Park on a four game win streak as they win a thriller at home over Keyport. A special thanks to all of our sponsors who have allowed us to up our coverage big time here in 2015. It was so awesome to bring you six games of action. How about five more games on Saturday? Make sure you check out SureSportsZone.com for our Saturday highlight show. For our team at Shore Sports Auto Merch Crab Pandas, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Saturday with more high school football action right here on SureSportsZone.com.